Yeah, uh, welcome to this uh, two-part tutorial on uh, capturing video from uh, RAM. Um, in this first part, we will focus on the uh, RAM settings, uh, so choosing a resolution and window mode, uh, talking about vertical sync and uh, physics settings, how to use uh, time scale, and uh, then uh, a quick talk about the uh, settings for your capture software. Okay, the first decision is obviously uh, what do you actually want to capture? Um, uh, at what resolution do you want to use full screen or window mode? Or uh, a, at, at what frame rate do you want to capture? So uh, yeah, you could do uh, 4K if you have a 4K monitor. I'm usually capturing at full HD. Um, maybe you want to do some side-by-side -side video thing. Uh, so you would capture two videos uh, at uh, half uh, of full HD and put them together later in editing. And yeah, for frame rate, um, there shouldn't be any reason to go anything except for 30 or 60 FPS, because it's like kind of the standard for YouTube and stuff. Uh, the resolution for VAM obviously can be changed by just running the, this VAM config bat that's in your uh, main directory of VAM. Um, but um, if you change that, uh, more often uh, because yeah you're switching between different resolutions for different videos um, uh, yeah you can create a custom bat file that just um, runs uh, VAM at some custom resolution uh, I will put a link in the video description for a tutorial on how to do that okay the next thing we need to talk about is uh, vsync um, what does it do? It uh, makes sure that the game runs actually in sync uh, with the refresh rate of your monitor. It solves uh, two issues. The first one is uh, screen tiering, where the monitor is reading data from the graphics card at the exact moment where that said data is updated. So say at the upper part of your screen, you have the previous frame and suddenly data is updated and it reads the next frame and that means that there's some position on your screen where you switched between the frames suddenly and um, if at that moment there was lots of movement on the screen you really see that yeah it's two different frames so uh, there's a lot of difference and then you see this tier it's called um, uh, yeah the other issue is that if the monitor would read the frame slightly too early you would just read the previous frame again so you have it twice or vice versa if your monitor reads slightly too late you might actually skip a frame and um, uh, even at 60 frames you still see that that uh, it's somehow not smooth you can't really point a finger to it but it's not smooth and um, yeah that's this this issue uh, the thing is yeah you can turn on vsync so a uh, graphics card and monitor just sync to each other and um, run exactly at the same frame rate. Um, yeah, if you enable this, uh, also your capture software, for example, OBS Studio can um, also capture in sync with RAM. So uh, your video has actually all the frames it's supposed to get. Um, yeah, if you happen to use my uh, frame rate control plugin, uh, you have uh, even more options. Uh, let's quickly look at this in uh, VAM. So let's go to um, user preferences here. And here you got the desktop vSync uh, option. So uh, I'm currently running at 60 frames because my monitor runs at uh, 60 hertz. Um, if you happen to be in VR, this has no effect because you have vSync always enabled, but with the refresh rate of your headset. So that might be like uh, 90 hertz or 45 hertz, uh, depending on uh, what uh, brand and stuff you use. Um, um, yeah, um, let's also quickly look at uh, the frame rate control plugin. I have it here as a session plugin, but uh, essentially it could be anywhere. Um, uh, yeah, you have the same option here. You can turn off uh, vSync, you can turn it on. But you have, in addition, you have the vSync half, one third, and one quarter uh, vSync. Um, this essentially makes um, the game run at half, or one third, or one quarter of your monitor refresh rate. So if I go to half, 
I'm uh, going to 30 frames, uh, which is great if you want to capture at 30 frames. Or if you go to one quarter, then we go to 15 frames. Why would you ever want to capture uh, at 15 frames? Yeah, well, maybe your system is not fast enough uh, to actually run at 30 frames because you want to put like five or 10 uh, characters in it. Um, well, if you capture like that, you can just uh, and you can rely on it's precisely 15 frames, you can just speed it up later in editing. Uh, it kind of messes up audio, but for the video itself, uh, that works fine. Um, yeah, so uh, we want to capture at 30 frames, so let's go to vSync half then. Um, yeah, the next thing we need to look at uh, is the physics setting of them. Um, uh, yeah, assuming we want to uh, record at 30 graphics frames uh, per second by using the vSync half. Um, if you left your physics rate setting in VAM uh, at the default setting, uh, in desktop mode it will run at 72 Hz. So that means 72 physics frames per second, um, it is, which is independent of the uh, graphics frame rate. Um, as uh, 72 divided by 30 is 2.4. That means for every graphics frame, you would have to do two or sometimes even three physics updates just to keep up. Uh, so um, that that yeah, your physics keep up with uh, actual uh, game. Um, the problem was what comes in is that there is the physics cap setting, the, the maximum number of physics updates you can do per frame before it just starts, oh shit, I can't do it, and um, uh, just skips physics frames. Skipping physics frames means uh, your animation might desync from real time. So if you have anything that's really time-based, like audio, um, your uh, animation suddenly runs out of sync from that, uh, which is you want to avoid, obviously. Um, so you may have to choose your physics cap setting right. That's that's what I'm trying to say here. Um, so basically, especially at those low frame rates, because RAM is designed to run at like 60 frames at least, if not 90, um, and at those low frame rates, you really need a lot of physics updates per frame to keep up. Um, and uh, yeah, that's why you should set your physics cap to three. Um, but what is even better, if you would set your physics rate to 60 Hertz instead of 72, because um, it would mean you need exactly two updates every frame. So it's, just, it's the same duration every frame. So everything is way more stable instead of having like one while a frame where you have to do three updates. Um, uh, you could try the other uh, physics rate settings as well, uh, but yeah try to keep it in uh, like a multiple of your graphics frame rate. Um, another example, um, if your logic rendering runs at 60 frames because you're just using the normal vSync and you set your physics rate at 60 hertz, in that case you only need one physics update per frame. Uh, so you could technically set your physics cap to one. Um, uh, one more example for recording at uh, 15 frames with uh, resync one quarter uh, in a situation where you want to speed up the video later in editing. Um, yeah, you would also set your physics rate to 60 hertz. Um, but yeah, this would mean uh, actually you need four physics updates per frame. Uh, but the highest physics cap you can do is um, three. So you would uh, miss physics updates and animation would actually run slower, desyncing from uh, from real time. Um, uh, but the thing is, you want to speed up the video uh, at a later point anyway. So if you want to speed up a factor of two, you actually want a physics rate of 30 only, which we can't set because that doesn't allow it. Um, um, but what you can do is use the uh, time scale setting in, uh, in VAM. So um, you can go here, click for more options button, and there's this time scale slider. So you could set it to half, which means everything that is time related in VAM runs at half speed. Um, 
so that's exactly what you need when you want to uh, uh, double the speed later in video editing, uh, because also things like uh, gravity are applied with, with uh, 9.81 meters per second. So it's also time-based. So uh, these kind of things, um, uh, yeah, you would also want to apply correctly. So if you want to speed up a video later, you would have to uh, use this time scale slider accordingly here. Um, uh, yeah, you could also set to uh, 0.25 if you want uh, one at quarter speed and uh, multiply your 15 frames per second later to 60 frames per second uh, video. Um, yeah, the only thing that doesn't work nicely with uh, time scale is audio, as I mentioned earlier. Yeah, um, a few words on uh, capture software. You can use pretty much any uh, capture software you uh, you want to use. Uh, for the things I'm doing, I'm using OBS Studio, which is mostly used by like uh, streamers. Um, for the settings, the really important thing is that you should make sure you whatever software you use actually uses the hardware encoder chip on your graphics card. Um, you don't want to encode videos on your CPU. Um, so if you have an NVIDIA card, you would set to this uh, NVIDIA uh, uh, codec. Um, also, obviously, uh, you want to set uh, uh, capturing resolution and frame rates to match uh, what you set before in VAM. Um, yeah, so this concludes the first part of this tutorial. And uh, yeah, the second part will be a separate video uh, looking at the window camera atom, uh, my super video plugin, how to move and animate the camera, and also uh, camera stabilizing, which is interesting if you want to uh, motion capture uh, the camera movement. Um, yeah, hope to see you there.